Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Dreamcast. When I own a system, I like to have the best mods possible. There are two main mods to get the best possible experience for the Dreamcast. The first mod I have is the GDMU. It's an ODE, an optical drive emulator that lets you put your games on an SD card and play them instead of the uh, disk drive. Mine is actually a clone GDMU. Authentic GDMUs are kind of hard to get. They're not readily available and you have to like pounce on them when they get released. So I'm not really proud of the fact that I have a clone one, but uh, I'm gonna put this in my console so that I could play games from an SD card. I do have this cool 3D printed case. Uh, the design comes from LaserBear. So this is gonna be pretty cool looking in my system. The second and more interesting mod to me is this DC Digital, it used to be called DC HDMI, but HDMI, um, they don't like people using their uh, HDMI brand without uh, licenses and things. So the normal video output of a Dreamcast is all sorts of crazy resolutions. It's 480i in most games, there's 240p games, there's 480p games. So it's kind of all over the place and you need a specialized adapter if you're going to handle all those resolutions um, in an analog output. The DC Digital is a digital to digital mod, which will output video from an HDMI port up to 1080p. So that's really where it's at. I'm really excited to do the DC Digital. Uh, it's a, got some pretty unique soldering and uh, I'm excited to, to do it. This is not gonna be sort of an instructional video. This is gonna be just my experience trying to solder it but uh, I think you guys will enjoy it. So let's head over to the bench and let's bust this Dreamcast open. Welcome back to the bench. I got Dan's tutorial pulled up on my phone. So let's take apart this Dreamcast. Okay, disassembly was kind of ridiculous, but uh, now we're gonna do the modifications to this bottom shield here. Now I gotta bend, I gotta cut and bend off this little bottom part here and this bottom part here. He uses some big chunky pliers, but uh, I, I have these little tiny guys. I'm gonna see if those work. Um, I might have to go grab something better. doing the next part off screen you're supposed to take this drill block here and use a use a drill with a 3 30 second bit and drill three holes in this bottom set and then you turn this around and you you do two holes again so you're basically making a line of five holes using the drill but when I was watching the video he mentioned that you're supposed to go three and a half of these little vent holes over. The drill block that he's using in that video is a lot wider. This is a this is a must be a newer kit that comes with this skinnier drill block. So as you can see, some of the holes that I started to drill were actually in the wrong spot. So if you're using this yellow or the skinnier drill block, you actually need to measure four blocks, four vent holes from the right here before you start your drilling. The other thing you should be doing is just look at where the holes are in this HDMI port. So the drill block should kind of go right over 
where that HDMI port is. That way you're not gonna mess it up. So you just kinda wanna look at where, you know, where this thing is going. So after you got those five holes with the drill, then I just took this file here and filed out a kind of thin hole for the HDMI port on this the mod to go into. So it's got a nice snug fit and it sticks out the hole on the side over here. So that's where you're gonna plug your mini HDMI uh, cable into. And the last thing I did was drill two screw holes, one here and one here. As you can see now, I've got two screws going through the case to secure the mod to the Dreamcast. And I tried really hard to get that on the camera. I'll have some, uh, I'll have some filler shots there for you to see a little bit of what I did, but this was sort of difficult to do. So take your time, double, triple check the documentation. Uh, I recommend looking up the text documentation on Dan's website if you're gonna do this for the most up-to-date information. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's do this ribbon cable. First thing we gotta do is remove these two resistors here, R9 and R10 right there. A little bit of flex pen. Fresh solder. Then get some flux on the soldering iron. And just go back and forth here. There's nine, 609. And 6010, 610. <laughs> it's pretty good, I'm gonna hit it with some solder braid to clean that up. Okay, that now that area is cleaned up. Okay, just doing a dry fit of this uh, flex cable here. There are a, bunch, a few points that will have to get soldered after these larger integrated circuits are soldered. There's one point here on a like a capacitor or a resistor here, and there's a point in between these big caps right here. So I'm gonna take this off and pre-tin those spots because I think that those are gonna be hard to tin after the ribbon cable's in. So I'm gonna take this off, and I think it was that guy and the left side of that. So this guy, and this one here. All right, now, first we're gonna solder is we're gonna solder this ribbon cable to the audio DAC up here, just to hold it in place and sort of have it lined up so that the other parts of the flex cable down over here are still lined up. I'm just gonna kind of put uh, flux here. Okay, so if I put some solder on my tip, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just get it tacked down. It, seem, it seems to line up pretty easily. This actually kind of looks harder. I say this now, but it looks harder than it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a tiny amount just to kind of tack it down on the side here and then clean off the tip. I really don't want a ton of solder on here, I don't think, but uh, this is hard for me to do and to get on the camera. But before I keep going, I... I'm just making sure that the other parts down here definitely line up, and they looks like they do. And this part here, and those bits there. All right, so I'm gonna keep going here. Just gonna do a couple of more spots along this braid. Really not super concerned with bridging. Just want to get, you know, we'll clean this up afterwards in a minute, 
but I really just want to stick this in place. Now that this is tacked into place, we're going to move on to tack the bottom, the, the video DAC, just so that everything is kind of lined up and kosher all the way down. Okay, I think that's everything. Definitely going to start back on this audio chip down here. Put a bunch of more flux here. That's gonna be the key, key here. I have a huge bridge on this side. So before adding new solder, I'm just gonna clean that up. My strategy for cleaning these up is going to be the same kind of technique I did with the Super Nintendo. I'm not going side to side. I'm gonna go just uh, like into the pins and then back up. That way, if I've got extra solder, I'm not spreading around, I'm pulling it out. If I have to, I can add more solder. And I'm also not gonna break any of those pins on this IC. So let's keep doing that. It looks like I'm, I'm not aligned. Not aligned with this thing here, so I'm gonna put some flux. All right, so I was able to use my X-Acto knife to lift the ribbon cable a little bit, so now this is loose again so I can move it over and line it up. Let's try that again. Okay, those look lined up better. Now I just need to clean the bridges. Okay, not 100% perfect. I'll keep going a little bit, but we're making good connections between the flat flex and the pins there. That's pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to these ones here. These look to be about the same pitch. Just gonna clean that bridge up, get some more solder down, making it look nice. All right, I think that side's pretty good. Last but not least. That one is a little harder because I had too much solder on there and uh, my normal like drag it off technique didn't work too well, but I'm pretty happy with that too. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check for continuity using my multimeter off camera and uh, basically I'm just gonna see if any of the, pit, uh, the pins, the pins next to each other on any of these 
parts of the flex cable are touching and then I'll know if I'll have a bridge and then I can clean it up. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, not too bad. I had a little bit of bridging here, but I cleaned it up and uh, we're good to go. Now I'm just gonna solder together all the other remaining points on the ribbon cable. I think that's everything. I flipped the board over and now I've got to take a cable and solder two wires from, there's two resistors here on the on the motherboard to a P1 and P2 here on the GDMU. Uh, oh, sorry, the DC HDMI. Okay, that's one and two. Okay, I think the only thing left to do is to put the pieces together and test it. So, let's try to do that. All right, I guess that's it. All right, here's the Dreamcast. Everything's buttoned up. Just gotta be careful not to, this is the exposed power supply, but let's go ahead and boot up the console, see what, if we have picture. That's the VMU on the... This monitor's a little slow. Okay, so it boots right into this GD, GD menu. Let's uh, select. Skies of Arcadia, why not? See how it looks. Wow. Dreamcast has such a cool intro. Blue looks good. Whoa. Sweet. Never played this game before, but it looks cool. Yeah, colors are great. I'd like to give you my final thoughts on the mods that I did. I really enjoyed the DC Digital. I was a little bit of afraid at first. Anytime you put a flat flex cable in a mod like that, you kind of scare away a lot of the hobbyist DIY modders away from the mod just because it does add a little bit of an element of difficulty, but it honestly wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. With the proper techniques and flux, it's not as bad as it seems. And the results are amazing. It sounds good. It looks awesome. You don't really need to fill around with anything. That's the thing with, with using an OSSC. You have to tweak it, get the right cables and this and that. With these digital to digital mods, all you have to do is plug in an HDMI cable and away you go. That's, that's really awesome. I had some problems with the GDMU at first. 
the mount from Laser Bear didn't allow the GDMU to sit properly in the slot where the, C the CD drive used to be. I reached out to him on Twitter and he recommended me print this other base piece that was actually shorter that allowed the GDMU to fit in the slot and then it ended up working for me. That's just a word of warning. If you have one of these GDMU clones, you may have problems getting it to work with your Dreamcast with that laser bear mount. But that's more of an issue with the GDMU, I think, and not so much the laser bear mount. I just don't think that the quality is really that great with the clones, but you know, what do you expect? It's a clone. I was having problems at first, but I ended up making it work. For the most part, it was a pretty easy experience and you get to play the games from an SD card, so that's pretty good. If you like these mod videos, hit the like button and get subscribed. I really do like doing these videos for you guys. It's almost like I'm bringing you guys along with me to when I do these mods. It's it's That's almost as enjoyable as doing the mod itself, so I really do enjoy doing them. Leave me a comment too if there's a mod that you'd like me to check out. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.